Some of you, are any of you a little bit scared by poetry? When you hear poetry, what sort of words come into your mind? Yes, come. Um, they feel more like calm. It feels calm. You feel calm. That's great. That's the mood that we should all be in because this is really going to be poetry made easy. And I don't think that poetry was ever very hard in the first place. So calm is the kind of word that we want to hear, definitely. But I will tell you that how I got started with poetry, I was not, you know, born with this amazing desire to want to write poetry. I, it had to take some convincing. <coughs> Actually, to be more specific, my mom sort of bribed me to start writing poetry. Um, I was a huge reader. I love reading poetry. I would just devour books by Shel Silverstein and Jack Kolecki. I really liked funny poems. Anything that rhymed too is good. So I would buy all these stacks of poetry books, and my mom, I think, was getting a little tired of buying so many books for me and not seeing any poetry being written by me, so she said, hey, Adora, here's the deal. I will buy you unlimited amounts of poetry books for as long as you want, as long as you Try writing poetry. Just write a couple of poems and see how you like it. Well, that couple of poems to see how you like it turned into a lot of poems. And so I was able to publish my poetry collection, Dancing Fingers. So I know how you feel. If you're not sure about whether you like poetry or not, it took a bribe to get me started. But I'm hoping that we can um, grow to love poetry with a little bit of practice. This is my second book, actually, Dancing Fingers. And then my first book, Flying Fingers, is a collection of short stories and tips on writing. So you can tell that I really love to write and read. So I'm going to be uh, moving through a slide here. The first thing is what poetry means. According to the dictionary, poetry is literature in verse, literary works written in verse, in particular verse writing of high quality, great beauty, emotional sincerity or intensity, or profound insight. Now, personally, I think that that's a pretty hard definition to understand just from looking at it. Does anyone want to kind of look at that and tell me what do you think? And there's really no right or wrong here. What do you think that this definition is basically saying what poetry is? What do you think all those words are saying in, in like uh, kid language? Let's let's do it that way. Anybody want to take a shot? Yes. Sad. Do you think it's sad? Well, I, I, <laughs> Can you have Caitlin try up front? It has a strong meaning. It has, it has a strong meaning. Lucas? It could be funny. It could be funny. Right, so I'm going to uh, start writing a couple of these definitions that we see from this. Um, so we see sad, strong meaning, funny. So you can tell that from we have sad and we have funny in the same. Um, in the same summary. So that means that poetry has quite a bit of variation. And this definition definitely gives a bit of wiggle room, doesn't it? Because it says literary works written in verse. So when you think about how poetry looks, that's verse, um, how it's written. In particular, verse writing. So it's just saying it's in verse and it's really good. Now, that's not super specific, is it? Because when you look at something like high quality, great beauty, emotional sincerity or intensity, or profound insight, um, that's saying things like good, beautiful, sincere or intense, so the emotions are really clear um, in there, or profound insight. Uh, it's sharing some new piece of wisdom, a uh, new piece of knowledge. Look at the or here. That means that it could be any one of these. And another great thing is that it's really up to you to decide what poetry is. Because these things of quality, beauty, intensity, they're all very subjective. That means that different people will have a different idea of what it is. So if you're ever scared of poetry because you worry, well, it won't be good. The great thing is, is that this is a definition with a lot of wiggle room. And it's really up to you, your readers, to decide this, po this is poetry or not. So that's the dictionary definition of poetry. Now, a poem can be a lot more than that. You can do a great amount with a poem. Does anyone want to give an example of a poem that they like? Does anyone poem have that you like that you know? Does anyone have wow. a favorite poem? Yeah, that would be great. This might be a bit of a challenge if you can like remember the name of a favorite poem. Okay. Matt, you want to try? In the summer. 
summer? So in the summer. Oh, in the summer. Great. And so, why do you like that poem? Do you want to tell us about it? Are you able to hear it, Adora? Yeah, it tells about the sun and the beach. Did I hear that right? Yeah, kind of some summery kind of stuff. Okay. So in the summer, um, great. Sounds like a wonderful poem. Tells about the sun. Tells about the beach. Really makes that image. And I think that when we think about our favorite poems, or if you go home and you pick up a book of poetry from the library or whatever, look for look for a poem that you really like and try to pick out the reasons that you like it, um, so that you can put that to work when you're writing your own poem. The great thing is that with poetry, you can show your reader an image, like of summer, you can tell a story, you can do so much with just a few words. It can be however long or short you want it to be. You can have a two-line poem. I once wrote a poem that just goes like this. Pum dee dee dum goes the drum. Some tap their feet and hum. It was just two lines. Now, you might say that that's a very, very short poem, but they're really fun to write. They're called couplets. You can also have really epic poems. They're poems that span hundreds of pages. Raise your hand if you've ever been stuck when you're trying to think of ideas. Has anyone ever had one of those writer's block moments? Yep, pretty much everyone has. If you've never, ever been stuck trying to think of ideas, I'm suspicious as to whether you're a robot. To help us think about topics for poetry, we're going to be looking at some possible inspirations. Where can we get these ideas? Now, history is a really great inspiration for poetry. You can learn so much from all the things that have happened before. But when I say history, I don't just mean medieval Europe or stuff that happened a really, really long time ago. History could be as long ago as yesterday or what's happening in the news. So, poetry tip number one, look back. We're going to be talking about writing some poems inspired by olden times. <coughs> um, let me quickly switch over to... Oops. Now, I'm not going to read this entire definition. I think we've uh, had a lot of definitions already. But the history is what has happened, past events, background, the past. What does history mean to you? What were you about? Um, looking back, like, on what happened, like, that what people did or what you basically did yesterday. Definitely, looking back on what has happened. Anyone else? Something that happened, um, Something in the past, like something that happened after the, before the second that you're in right now. Yeah, exactly. It could be something like if I walk over here and now I'm going to walk back. Maybe me doing that is history. Actually, that is history because history is just everything in the past, and the past is continually updating. So something you did a second ago. That's definitely a great way to think about it. What else? What is what is an image that comes to mind? What do you what words come to mind? You can just throw anything out. An, an event that happened that isn't happening anymore. An event that happened Some, Well, an event that happened, that's all. Okay, an event that happened. Any more ideas? Uh, like, it makes me feel like Let's say back to George Washington. Okay, George Washington. Definitely. And let's get one more. Robert. Interesting facts, and there are a lot of those for sure. So when we think of history, we think of looking back, we 
thinking of things we did a second ago. We think of an event that happened that's over now. We think of George Washington and interesting facts. So this is a lot of different places that we can get ideas from. History is a lot more than just dates and time and presidents. History is everything that has ever happened to anyone or everyone who has ever lived. There's a lot of evers in that sense. So history is very inclusive. It's pretty much everything. History is all the songs that have ever been sung and all the paintings that have ever been painted. And history includes your family, too. Raise your hands if you ever asked your grandparents or, um, to, or an elder who you know. So maybe you've gone to like a senior center. Maybe you've asked some grown-ups about their childhood. And you asked grown-ups about their childhood. I'm seeing a lot of raised hands. It's really enjoyable for me to hear my dad talk about how prices of things used to be so cheap. And he would always go on and on about you know, how much food prices are different now and stuff like that. And it's always very entertaining to hear about what life was like in the 1960s and 70s, um, in the 1950s from my grandparents. So history includes your family too. Make sure to make use of that resource. Now what about you? You might not think of it this way. You might think, well, my parents, my grandparents, they've really seen all the cool history happening. But we've been witnesses to history, too. How have we been witnesses to history? What kind of history have you seen happening? Okay. Uh, well, I've seen us eating lunch, um, learning about math, history, and all the stuff that's so that's your personal history. Great. So you you know you talk about your day. You have your your school day to look back on. Um, what about so what about some historical events? So when your when your parents or grandparents or an elder relative is telling you, oh well, when I was growing up, we heard about Pearl Harbor on the radio, or um, we saw um, schools being integrated in the American South on TV or something like that. People were all we've all witnessed historical events taking place. So what are some big historical events that you've witnessed? The earthquake in Japan. The earthquake in Japan, exactly. We were all watching on our TV. We were, maybe some of you even saw the breaking news, although I think it was pretty late at night. And there was, we were all in some ways witnesses to history. Even though we might have been following it on our TVs or on through the news, we were all seeing it. What are some other historical events you've witnessed? Hurricane. Hurricane Irene, definitely. And you guys were a lot closer to it than I was over here in Seattle, for sure. So you have a lot to draw on. And one more historical event you've witnessed. Okay. Um, when oh, I mean, I'm sorry? I think we forgot. Let's see. Wait. The tsunami. The tsunami in Japan. Wait. Yeah, definitely. So we we've seen natural disasters. We've heard about things on the news that are really huge or important. Think about yourself as a witness to history as you go through life and you hear all these news items, and suddenly you have a lot of inspiration to draw on. Ask your relatives about history they've lived. If you didn't raise your hand, if you've never asked an elder relative or um, someone you know about their childhood, then you definitely should. That's a huge source to draw on. Here's tip number one for your poetry inspiration. Look to history. It's very simple. You have some great ideas, great base of knowledge. You're all learning about history every day in school, so you can really pull on that and use that to write poems. You can choose from thousands of interesting characters. Who are some really awesome people you know of in history that are just really interesting or have done great things? Historical people, right there. Well, why don't we name one? Abraham Lincoln, great. So you could write a poem all about Abraham Lincoln or Honest Abe, or whatever name you kind of use, and maybe about his top hat, or about the great things he did. You could tell a story about Abraham Lincoln through a poem. You could write a poem that's a little more abstract, maybe some of the words you think of. There, there, um, there's a very famous um, 
poem I gave about Abraham and Lincoln. Uh, so, what are some other interesting characters? Anthony. Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, great. Mentor of the light bulb. Definitely a lot of material there. The really funny example of a poem you could write for Thomas Edison is you could write a poem called Dear Thomas Edison. Like, Dear Thomas Edison, thank you very much for. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for inventing the light bulb is a funny way to start. But then you could say, thank you for inventing the light bulb because without it I wouldn't be able to do my homework late at night and then write a list of all the other things maybe you could make it funny. And so that's just a poem I thought of, right? You can come up with ideas on the spur of the moment like that. One more really interesting character from history. Yeah. Paul Revere. Paul Revere, definitely. And there's uh, that famous poem, Paul Revere's Ride, that actually helped make him famous. So poems can take someone who wasn't very famous before it was written, and, and that poem, Paul Revere's Ride, actually helped transform how we see him in history. So it's pretty incredible to see the role poems have played in history. Great. Paul Revere, Thomas Edison, Abraham Lincoln. See how many interesting characters there are to write about? Now, the thing is, you don't necessarily have to pick the good guys either. You could write poems about evil pirates, um, or I think of uh, a poem I wrote about Blackbeard, for instance. It was all about how Blackbeard had uh, was sailing around the world, and I don't know how much of it was very historically accurate, but you can definitely draw on pirates and knights fighting each other in medieval Europe, whatever you want to, want to do. When you write poems inspired by history, you can add your own creative touches. The thing to remember is that a poem about history isn't the same as a report about history or a research paper. A poem about history is something where you bring a character or you bring an event really to life. So that means if you want to, you can add details about what this... Maybe you're writing about a duel between two knights at an evil castle. And perhaps it's an actual event that happened, or maybe it's an event that is inspired by what you know about history. The difference is that, let's say I decide to write about two knights and they're fighting, it might not be something that actually took place. I might be inventing the names, I might be inventing sort of what's going on, but it's my idea of a historical poem. So your historical poems could also be very factual. You could take, you could make sure that every line is accurate. And I think either way is okay, because the important thing to remember is that in poetry you have a lot of license. Basically you get to do what you want. You can imagine how people from history might have acted, talked, or even smelled. If you've ever watched a movie, where, which is a historical movie, so for instance, um, if any of you have seen a, uh, one of the classic novels being brought to life in a movie, you know that the movie director is taking a lot of license. They wouldn't know necessarily how people would have, um, would have acted. They're not, they're not doing a documentary, they're just, they're really uh, putting their own creative touches on it. So you can do that, you can imagine. History is definitely a renewable source of poetry and that inspiration, you can keep on going back and back. And you don't have to focus on famous people. You could imagine what it would be like to live in Victorian England if you were a chimney sweep or a beggar. Historical poems, allow you to experiment with different styles. So here are some things that you can definitely do on your own time is think of a famous character, an intriguing person, or an event from history, like who you learned about in class. Research them, go to the library, and find resources about them. Write down interesting details, adjectives that describe them, and then write a poem. But what we're going to do right now is something a little different. I'm going to uh, head on back to the main poetry presentation, and we're going to start thinking about how we might write a poem together. So keep, so think of some ideas, start those wheels turning in your head about poetry. But I want to quickly also say, history is not the, <coughs> not our only source of inspiration as well. You can get poetry inspiration from really everything, from the outdoors to your pets. Who here has pets? Seeing a lot of raised hands. Wow, I wish I could raise my hand. I don't have any pets. My sister really wants to get a rat, but I think my family was pretty firm against that. They're supposed to be very cute, apparently. I know, I heard a rat, and I was like, aren't you supposed to get those out of your house? So, uh, poetry inspirations of animals are incredibly 
all over the place, right? Any of you have pets, if they do funny things, you can write about them in a poem. I know that you might be getting a little tired of me saying you can turn everything into a poem, but it's really true. If I wanted to, I could pretty much grab anything and turn it into a poem. I could you know, grab this um, globe here and look at this and write a poem about the color blue and how it represents the ocean and the sky. <coughs> yeah, okay, so you see, I'm, I really love turning it into poems. Uh, let me quickly switch. Here we go. Sorry, I always shows that for us to decide. Here's a quick, I want to quickly read you my poem, Cow, which is an example of something you might write inspired by an animal. I have a most annoying cow who lazes in the sun. She torments every hen and sow and has a lot of fun. She gives no milk at all and moves away at night. Even when she's in her stall, she always picks a fight. Eventually, she ran away. Freedom, a great allure. Away, away from her stall and hay, but she left a great deal of manure. That's a poem about cows that I wrote, and it was just intended to be uh, a quick and humorous little poem about cow. Animals are great inspirations like poetry, you probably won't run out anytime soon, and the topic of your personal experience is a source of inspiration for poetry. So I remember when you said that you had lunch and you had math and history. Take that personal experience, everything that you remember about the day, what, what is it that you tell your parents when you get home that happened in school, the interesting tidbits, turn them into poems. So now, I know the image of a firework seems a little strange, but it's because we are going to be writing our own poem, and I think that that's a pretty dramatic moment. So, <laughs> pretty dramatic moment, what do you think? Well, we're all going to be writing it together. So, open a Word document, and what are some of your ideas? What are the ideas you've come up with? Let's have a brainstorming session here. Brainstorming for a poem in the back of rabbit. rabbits. Rabbits. You want to write about rabbits. Okay, so I'm going to put that down on the board here. Let me, uh, sorry. Okay, you can go on. So we have rabbits. What else? Actually, talking animals. Talking animals. All right, what else? Tyler? Two, two young chickens fighting. A, I'm sorry? Two devil chickens fighting. <laughs> wow, that is some impressive sounding. <laughs> Chickens fighting. Oh, I see. Okay. I heard spiders. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So, Cynthia? what's it? Dog. What? Dog. A dog. Right. Well, All right. Why don't we? So, we have four animal ideas right now. Why don't we try to get um, and some other ideas? So, personal experiences, history, anything else? Going to the supermarket, all right. So you could definitely turn that, turn something. The great thing about poetry is that it lets you turn something ordinary, something that most of us might do every week or even every day, and you can turn that into something that's very interesting, suspenseful. So going to the supermarket, anything else, personal experience or history? Well, we have a, you want to go someplace beside Penn? Right. Um, she said sports. I'm not sure if um, okay. we're looking for more person. Uh, let's. How about? So here's the thing. We're we're getting lots of good ideas. So what we want to make sure is that it's something first that is manageable to write in something that's not much longer than a page. Right. This poem isn't going to be an epic book long poem. So uh, let's try to be pretty specific with your ideas. So. Instead of saying history, you might say Abraham Lincoln, for instance. Great. Um, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci, great. Why don't we get two more ideas? 
I have a lot of instruments. Instruments? All right. So do you have any specific ones in mind, or just all the instruments? A specific one, huh? A wiggly tooth. A wiggly tooth. Nice. And our last idea. One more idea. Do you buy? The sorry. <coughs> rainforest. The rainforest. Great. Thank so. You. Let's review our list of ideas quickly. We have rabbits, talking animals, two devil chickens fighting, dog, dogs, <laughs> going to the supermarket, sports, Leonardo da Vinci, instruments, piano, a wiggly tooth, the rainforest. All right, so um, this is quite a lot. I don't want to go through every single one. So how about um, we can categorize them? So rabbits, talking animals, the devil chickens, doves are all one section. So these are all animals. And um, so raise your hand. So our two our two categories we're going to be voting on first are animals and history and objects. So raise your hand if you want to write something about one of the animal ones. Okay. Okay. Now raise your hand if you want to write something, a poem about one of our history slash personal experience ones. So sports and our Da Vinci instruments will lead to. Looks close. Looks pretty Looks close. close. It was animals, right? I, you know what? I would, I would have said because some, I would have said the second, to be honest with you. Oh. I think it had to. I think, I, I think uh, more of the uh, history. History. Oh, okay, cool. So this gives us definitely a lot to work with because we have a big variety of things here. So I know that some of you might be a little sad that the devil chickens are going to be in the mix, but who knows? If if they were around during the Leonardo da Vinci's time, that's okay. No. So, we have sports, the art, the instruments, wiggly tooth, and so why don't we, uh, should I randomly pick one? Why don't I just... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, why don't you go with I'll one? I'll go ahead and randomly pick one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by its toe. Um, what is the rest of that? If he hollers, let him go. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Um, that was like a really, I did a bad job of that. It was either a piano or a wiggly tooth. Wiggly tooth. Wiggly tooth. Wiggly tooth. Wiggly tooth. I think I hit the wiggly tooth. Now, eeny, meeny, miny, mo is, I just had a thought, and that's that you all have memorized and recited a poem before because eeny, meeny, miny, mo, you could arguably say, hey, that's a poem. Pretty interesting thought, right? Okay, so we're going to be writing about having a wiggly tooth. Has everyone in the room before had at least one wiggly tooth? Yeah, I think so, right? Because you're all you're old now. Right? Oh, yeah. I unfortunately. Have a couple in the room right now. Oh, you have some wiggly teeth people in the room right now. Yeah. Excellent. So we have some primary sources. We can use them for sure. They know exactly what it's like. All right, so we're going to be writing a poem about a wiggly tooth. Okay, so um, don't worry, that's not the actual title, just a working title, Wiggly Tooth Poem. Do, does anyone have a care whether it should be rhyming, not rhyming? We can we can, uh, rhyming, okay. And uh, so here's here's the big thing. Should it be um should should we have a narrator? That's the person who's saying the poem. Should the narrator be having a wiggly tooth? Should they be just talking about wiggly tooths in general? How should we, what should our first line look like? Any ideas? Okay, um, yeah. Should, should, should we, the person who's saying the poem have a wiggly tooth? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, who thinks that the person who's saying the poem should actually have a wiggly tooth in the poem? 
All right, so we want so imagine that I'm the narrator of the poem. I have a wiggly tooth, and I am writing about my wiggly tooth experience. Now, how do we make this interesting to our readers? We want to make sure that this is something that people will have a fun time reading. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about how we might do that? Make it funny. Make it funny. Great. Humor is a really good way to entertain, to want, make people want to keep on reading. So let's make it funny. And uh, we can do this by, um, well, how do you think we could make it funny? Can we make it funny, Grace? You can tell part of the poem by the viewer's point of view. That's a good idea. So we could have the narrator. In fact, maybe it could be sort of a bit of a back and forth. I'll just start with some ideas. So we'll get started writing, and I will probably backspace a lot and rewrite. That's all perfectly normal. When you're writing poems, there really is no perfect first draft. I have a wiggly tooth. It's very. I have a wiggly tooth today. If we're wanting to rhyme, I suppose I should be looking for things that are easier to rhyme than two. Have a wiggly tooth today. It's very wiggly indeed. Every hmm. What I haven't had a wiggly tooth in quite a while. What are some words that describe wiggly teeth in the can you throw out maybe let's get three four words? Bloody. Bloody. Bloody, alright. So we can throw a bit of the gross in there. Bloody, what else? Caitlin. What? Hurt. Hurts. Loose. 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 Then. Painful. Painful. Weird. 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 Okay, I think we have, oh, yeah, one more. Ugly? Ugly. Ugly? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little weird to, well, look, I'm going to use all these words, but it's a little weird to see that ugly, and it's moving on in your mouth, and definitely, yeah, now I, it's all coming back to me for sure. Also, my parents held on, and I don't know if this is just a weird thing my parents do, but they hold on to all of our wiggly teeth as, like, historical, I don't know, they're, yeah, they have all of our teeth that have fallen out over the years in a little box. I say it's creepy. Maybe every parent has that. <laughs> Alrighty, so we can we can use some of these words for our description in a poem. I have a wiggly tooth today. It's ugly and it's weird. The looseness. Today, so if we went to rhyme, I have a wiggly tooth today. What we don't have to rhyme with the whole today, we could just rhyme with the day part. Um, May, hey, hmm. Oh, she's saying say. Oh, right. I have a wiggly tooth today. It's ugly and it's weird. I have to say, it angles and jiggles inside my mouth in a most unpleasant way. I know. So I just realized I rhyme today, say, and way, which is kind of an unusual rhyme pattern. But let's say that we're just throwing in rhymes. Instead of a necessarily a step up. I have a wiggly tooth today. It's ugly and it's weird. I have to say, wiggles and jiggles inside my mouth in a most unpleasant way. How would we continue this? Alex. It is very bloody. It is. It is very bloody. Enough to make you scream. <laughs> But it's very loose and painful. I'm in 
All right, what do we need to rhyme with here? Oh, scream. What rhymes with scream? Rhymes with scream? Hold on, rhymes with scream? Yes. Cream? Ice cream. For dream? Dream. So, I, either we could have, I can't even eat ice cream, or I have, um, how do we use dream? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry? I had a dream. I had a dream. I had a dream that this tooth would was finally out, but then I woke up and it's still in my mouth. Mouth doesn't quite rhyme with out. Actually, this is, um, when you have something like out and mouth, or you have anything that kind of sounds like it rhymes, but it doesn't quite rhyme, that's called a slant rhyme, because it's just, it's, it's not quite a full rhyme, so slant rhyme is an interesting term to know. But then I woke up and it's still in my mouth. Now, reading this, are you entertained? How do we make this more funny? Sorry. Okay. She said more descriptive. More descriptive. Okay. Great. So. Um, maybe now we should turn to the point of view of the. Okay, she's saying turn to the tooth's point of view. Return to the tooth's point of view. Is it clear if I put tooth and the hole in there, like tooth, do, that, does that seem like the tooth is saying this? I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Alright. I beg your pardon, but I'm not. So the tooth is very offended, or maybe the tooth should say, maybe the tooth should be all outright angry. You call me ugly, you call me weird, how dare you, uh, offend me, offend me, how dare you offend me. <laughs> this is such, yeah, this is definitely <laughs> and 
minutes. So have any of you, actually I remember one time I was eating um, a, a plate of spaghetti and it was with tomato sauce and right as I was chewing on the spaghetti my tooth came out into the spaghetti. I know, really, really nice sounding, right? And all the tomato sauce and the, of course you have a lot of blood coming from your gum or your wiggly tooth coming out. So this, if you just imagine a tooth in chewed up spaghetti and tomato sauce and having and being at a friend's house, not a fun situation. It was really memorable um, though. So we could if we wanted to have this person's wiggly tooth come out when they're doing something like eating or maybe when they're running or just a time when it's really bad. So maybe they're actually not happy about it. Or we could just continue on. Oh wait, what's that feeling? There's something not there. What's that thing in my mouth? It's hard and it's, what is another word that would describe a wiggly tooth when it comes out? Let's get one word. Caitlin? Hard and it's not there. One more. It's hard and it's not there. So we already used not there. There's something not there. What's that thing in my mouth? It's hard and it's. So we want something, a word that will just fit here. What? Well, you were looking to rhyme with there? Oh, uh, let's see. Actually, let me run up here. Oh yeah, it would be. If you can. If not, that's fine too. Hannah? Small? Okay, nope, yeah. Clear? Let's... Or there? There? Actually, that's sort of gross that you would sort of be tasting your own wiggly tooth. I don't know. Maybe? Maybe you've done that. It's my wiggly tooth. It's finally out. Alright, so let's read over what we have. I have a wiggly tooth today. It's ugly and it's weird, I have to say. It wiggles and jiggles inside my mouth in a most unpleasant way. It is very bloody, enough to make you scream. Well, not really. But it's very loose and painful. I had a dream that this tooth was finally out, but then I woke up and it's still in my mouth. Tooth, you called me ugly? You called me weird? How dare you offend me with bloody and loose? I'm a wiggly tooth, I shouldn't be feared. Oh, please be quiet, just come out. Oh, wait, what's that feeling? There's something not there. What's that thing in my mouth? It's hard and it's small, it tastes very strange. It's my wiggly tooth. It's finally out. Great, I'm applauding you guys. You did where came up with the words, describe your wiggly teeth. I haven't had wiggly teeth in a little bit. I've had them, trying to think. I don't know when you get like your absolute last one, but it's, this is a good poem that really kind of describes that experience. Now I'm guessing that none of your wiggly teeth have ever talked to you. Is that right? Yeah, probably not. Um, if, you, if you're carrying conversations on with your wiggly teeth, you may want to tell, tell someone. But this poem allows us to do something that we wouldn't be able to do in real life. And that's the really cool thing about poems, is that with poems and with stories, we can talk about talking wiggly teeth who get offended. We can talk about, we can bring history to life, we can tell stories, we can share emotions. There's so much that you can do with a simple poem. Now obviously this poem isn't perfect either. There are some things that as you look back you could definitely see could be improved. Some of how it sounds. A poem is different from a story in that it's very important how it's read out loud. So you might want to make sure that it sounds good, that the syllables are lined up and things like that. But overall, I think we did a really good job. So now I have time for a little bit of Q&A, and I look forward to your questions. Okay. Um, in the back, guys. What, um, what time do you start school, like, after the video? What time do I start school? I have a... Um, I take two classes at my local school, and then I do the rest online. So I'm able to start school a little later, um, the ones that I that I go to in person around like uh, 9 a.m. I leave. Mean. 
Next. No, Tom? Okay, if you are the end of my poems, why do you write poems? Why didn't you just try like, to write the story? Why write poems instead of just writing a story? That's a great question. You might look at this and be like, well, why can not I just written a story about a wiggly tooth? Well, here's what would have happened if, let's say for, the, for this one, if I decided, all right, I'm going to write a story. It would go, I have a wiggly tooth today. It's ugly and weird. And you might take out some of these words because you wouldn't want them to write. So you would say, I have a wiggly tooth. It's ugly and weird. It wiggles and jiggles inside my mouth. It's unpleasant and bloody, and it would probably make a normal person scream. Well, not really, but it's really loose and painful. And it's not coming out, and I'm really sick of it being in there. Is that, and now to me, that's not quite as interesting as what we have with this poem. So the reason that you write poems could be to make something more interesting, to make something more humorous. It's a lot easier to be humorous sometimes when you have, when, when you're, oh, rhyming, that's what I found anyway. So you definitely, you could write a story about a wiggly tooth as well, and I'm sure it would be very good. But poems give you that, uh, you can just experiment with rhyming and with sound. So it's like giving you a whole nother layer to work with. When did I first start writing poems? I started writing poems when I was about eight, and my mom made that deal with me to buy the unlimited poetry books. And I didn't stop. Caitlin? Why do you choose like, poetry? Well, she kind of just says that. Um, Alexa? What's your favorite book you wrote? My favorite book I've written? Well, I have, um, it's really difficult to decide between Flying Fingers and Dancing Fingers because one's poetry and one short story. So, I would say, hmm, my favorite story story that I've written, I, I have a few favorite stories and a few favorite poems specifically. My favorite poem that I've written, how about that? That's easier to decide. My favorite poem that I've written uh, is one called Where Books Can Take You. So, hope that answers. Katie? How do you feel about you? How do you feel when you talk to adults? How do I feel when I talk to adults? Pretty normal. It's, it's really not that hard to talk to adults, I think. I've I've gone to a lot of conferences where it's actually all adults in the audience and giving speeches and stuff, so definitely it, it, um, I know from experience that it's not that hard. And last question, William. Uh, what's, the favorite, what's your favorite book you've ever read? What's my favorite book I've ever read? I have a lot of favorites. I love Chronicles of Narnia, Harry Potter, Redwall. Uh, the Book Thief, bunch of others. Those are just, that's a very little sample. I have probably a, book, a favorite book list that's this long. Okay, one more please, Ben. Liz? Um, is poetry your favorite, favorite, kind, favorite kind of subjects in books? Is my poetry my favorite kind of writing? Not necessarily. I really love writing short stories. I started out writing short stories and then my mom made the deal with me and that's why I started with poetry. So I would say it's fairly evenly split between short stories, novels, and poetry. I'm not going to pick favorites. <laughs> oh, okay, Dora. Well, we are right on top of lunch and uh, I know it's uh, 9 o'clock where you are now, right? Yep. Cool. And we are, getting, we are getting ready for lunch. And let's uh, let's thank you, and I will see you tomorrow again. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Now remember that if there's one thing you take away, it's that you're a poet. There's you don't need anyone to tell you uh, that you're a poet or a book you published. Just remember, I'm a poet. So hope you have a great lunch, guys. Thanks.